the story goes that there were two stars. They called them the evening star, which was Venus, the female, and then the morning star, which was Mars. So when they get together, they uh, made the first Skeety, which was a girl. She was brought down here on a tornado. The first male was created by the sun and the moon. You know, and of course, you know, we all know when they get together, it's an eclipse. In 2017, members of the Pawnee tribe of Oklahoma traveled to view the historic solar eclipse from land once owned by Nebraska folklorist and humorist Roger Welsh. There were 16 tents and, and camps down here, and we had ceremonies going on down at the river and ceremonies here and up on the hill um, in different ways of celebrating the eclipse. The Pawnee's visit to Nebraska that year capped a nearly four-decade relationship with Welsh. Roger practically defined Nebraska for the nation. He presented more than 200 postcards from Nebraska as a correspondent for Charles Kuralt's CBS Sunday Morning in the 1980s and 1990s. In 2007, Roger and his wife Linda did what few descendants of European immigrants have ever done in the 500-year history of America. They returned their land to its original owners. Every means known to man was used to acquire Indian property during the growth of our nation. Uh, but Roger, despite that great links that the country went to to get our land by hook or crook, by force of arms, he undercut all of that by simply returning it back to the Pawnee people. Along all of the major uh, rivers in Nebraska, our village had permanent earth lodge villages where we grew mother corn uh, and, uh, and followed the herd three months in the summer and in a winter hunt. So that was a vast uh, indigenous uh, homeland that we had when the world was young. In the 1870s, pressures built for the Pawnees to leave Nebraska and move to Indian Territory, today known as Oklahoma. Our numbers are dwindling, diseases and stuff was, was taking place, you know, was, kind of starvation was starting to happen. So it was about survival. My great-great-grandparents uh, walked down from Nebraska, and, um, and that was Lotus um, walking bear fancy eagle. She was forced to leave her um, father to die on the trail, and so she never um, had any love for Americans, <laughs> so she never learned English. When we came to Nebraska, it was a real, real, real time of depression, a real time of depression for our folks here. And so we lost a lot of our ceremonies, a lot of our old folks. While the Pawnees struggled in their new home, settlers in Nebraska began unearthing the homes they had left behind. We had no sooner left than people started digging up our, our cemeteries up there and, and carting the remains off to uh, federal and state uh, universities and museums. We were told that, you know, their spirits can't rest and there was consequences. And we felt like uh, it was real imperative to get our ancestors back and then be at rest. In 1988, the Pawnees decided to act. They wrote to the Nebraska State Historical Society seeking the return of their relatives. I was one of the attorneys that were involved in negotiating with the Nebraska State Historical Society and, and to get our remains. Okay. It was on the board, the highest thing I'd ever aspired to. And the Pawnee, Winnebago, and Omaha came asking for their remains off the shelves. The Historical Society said no. At the present time, there is really a lack of protection for unmarked burials, and there is no protection for the, or, or procedure for the proper treatment of Indian dead. Everybody on the face of this earth is allowed to be concerned about what happens to the remains of their ancestors, 
can be allowed to regard those remains with respect, veneration, or whatever it is they feel, to put together appropriate ceremonies, except the indigenous population of this country. And the purpose of this bill is to correct that. Are we digging up any pioneers? Are we digging up anybody on the Oregon Trail to see what they died of? Um, what kind of things were they buried with? No, we weren't, and that idea was ridiculous too. The more rude the other people got to be, and the more I saw this kicked me over the edge. He was an enemy at first, but what really shined was when he resigned off that board. That spoke volumes right there, you know, and we re realized, hey, you know, we do have an ally. Almost lost my job, the governor attacked me, the State Historical Society attacked me, the legislature attacked me, but I knew it was on the right side. Finally, after a bitter fight, in 1989, the Nebraska State Legislature became the first legislative body in America to pass a law to protect Native American graves and return remains to tribes. We go to the museums or the universities, and then we would go in into the rooms and look over the inventories, and lots of times we would go to the a storage facility. It makes you think when you see, when you have a little skull that big, you know, a child, and you have to put him down, you know, and they're usually in just little brown sacks or some kind of wrapping paper. Eventually, the Pawnees were able to regain thousands of their relatives from the storage vault of the Nebraska State Historical Society. But then they faced a new issue. Where would they bury them? The first time the, a contingent came out here to survey a place for the reburials, and I showed them all kinds of places down here, and it was easier then. Right now, it's not easy to get to the river on this side, but we went down to the river, and here were distinguished celebrities, um, uh, leading men in the tribe, in suits, good clothes, and I had to stand there and watch them wade into the river, crying and pulling the water over their hair, drinking the water because it was their river. It's the Loop River, the Loop Pawnee River. It's Plenty Potatoes River. That was like a, a healing type deal because of that river, the you know, Loop River. That's where you know our ancestors lived all up and down that river. I got home that night and Linda and I looked at each other and said, you know, if they're not visiting us on our place. We're visiting them on their place. And that sealed it. So we were going to leave it to them in our will. And then they needed a place for reburials. And it was Linda's idea. She said, why don't we give it to them now? And that way, instead of missing all the fun because we're dead, <laughs> we can be here and, and celebrate with them all of these things. And boy, it, it's been that way. They retained a life estate, but the Pawnee Nation owns the property now, and that, that sort of led to um, a land return movement. We have made him an honorary member of the Pawnee. You know, gave him a, a Pawnee name. You know, Paritalka means white Pawnee. You know, and he and you know he he likes that name. But what would the rest of Danabrog's residents think about this? The Pawnee flag flies on Main Street. There's a new mural over here on the American Legion building. And while there's a picture of the Danes coming to America, there's also a picture of the Pawnee who were here before. And more and more, the Pawnee have become an integral part of this community, which means that the community has accepted them but I think equally important is that the Pawnee have accepted this town. You know, it's, it's not just the land that's, you know, that we've received, you know, back, and it's the relationships, you know, that we've developed in doing that with Roger. And so many people who, who have, you know, been raised here or, or raised, you know, somewhere else, and they go to Nebraska and they're Pawnee, they feel that connection. 
that very, very strong connection to the land and to the water. We really do have a strong desire to not only maintain the homeland ties, but to really look into what it would take to have a government presence in Nebraska again. I think that, uh, you know, if a person is wanting to heal uh, historical injury or to bring about a reconciliation or a true atonement of, um, of a painful past, you know, um, when it comes to uh, our native people, it's all about the land. And there's nothing better that one can do than to return to land.